Good morning, friends and family. You are watching Encouragement Through the Word with Pastor Wayne Slingakiri. It's a place where giants are slain. And today we want to be sharing with you, don't be a fool. You need God. And at this time, myself and uh, Sister Janice, we want to come touch and agree with you. And so at this time, give us your undivided attention as we come in agreement with the things that you are believing God for. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, myself and Sister Janice, Father God, we come in agreement, Father God, with your people in the name of Jesus Christ, persons who are believing God for healing, who need a miracle in their body in the name of Jesus, who need a touch from you, Father, we come in agreement, Father, and by the power of God, we speak and declare in the name of Jesus Christ, we come against the strong man of infirmities in the name of Jesus. We drive him out and we command you to leave now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father. We thank you for touching uh, our various diseases in the bodies, Father God, as has no right but it's there and father we come against it in the name of jesus christ and we command it to go father right now we come against the strong man we come against poverty we come against father god uh, our lord persons who are emotionally ill father in their minds who are struggling father god we come against uh, our lord the spirit of discouragement in the name of jesus christ and we speak uh, that where there is despair father we speak hope we come in agreement and we thank you for your word god that is quick as powerful as sharper than any two-edged sword in the name of jesus christ so lord we thank you today for healing and making provision god for your people in the mighty name of jesus christ manifest yourself in your power myself and sisters and these we come we touch and we agree father with your people that they are healed they are whole that provision is provided for them father in the name of jesus christ right now in jesus name amen and amen always what a blessing it is always to come and to share the word of god uh, with you that's what we do is to encourage you inspire you to motivate you to look within the word see exactly what god has spoken to you in that word and stand upon it until you see the manifestation of it and so today like i said we want to talk to you about don't be a fool depend on god and if you know that persons who do not know God or you see them depending on themselves share this message with them because I believe it's going to speak uh, to them we want to go right into the word we want to talk about in the book of second uh, Chronicles chapter 20 verses 12 and this is a story of Jehoshaphat was king of Judah and um, he had some um, two other nations uh, they partnered together and they were uh, sending message to him uh, that how they was going to destroy the nation of judah and this is a place uh that um jehoshaphat came to jehoshaphat said a prayer he told the, the nation to go on a fast and they went on a fast and they begin to cry out to god and this is what he says in the book of second chronicles chapter 20 verses 12 he says O oh, our god will you not judge them will you not judge them and this is what we can know we can know that when persons when the enemy comes against us when we are innocent uh we have not done them anything wrong and they rise up against us they're just fighting us so he says this is what we can say oh god will you not judge them we know for a fact that god is judge and he is fair and he will judge the enemy that fights you for no no apparent reason he is going to judge them and he says oh god oh god will you have not will you not judge them then he says for we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us i remember having a conversation um, some years ago and speaking with uh, with my pastor uh, Pastor Rudolph Roberts speaking with him and we were just talking about um, you know light darkness talking about you know the enemy uh, and you know just as a as a mentor he's just sharing with me um, some things that we could expect and then he gave the scripture he says son he says um, in the world as you go out into the world today he said you're going to go out into the world as sheep among wolves 
And that's the reality of it. As believers, we go out into the world as sheep among wolves. And so here it is now. It says, and it seems like sheep has no power among the wolves. So he says, for we have no power to face this vast army. The army is coming and he relies that we have no power. We are weak within ourselves. We don't know exactly what to do. He says, listen, this army is vast and this army is attacking us. But this is what he says. He says, for we do not know what to do. This is what he says. We do not know what to do. Can you imagine a king uh, that is being that is that is in a, in a position in his life where he is helpless and he is saying, I am powerless to this army that is coming against me. And so to encourage you today, anything that is coming against you, glory be to God, any any fight, any battle that is coming against you for no apparent reason, just know that God, he has your back. And then he says, we do not know what to do. He says, but our eyes are upon you. <laughs> our eyes are upon you. And this is where we fasten our eyes. We fasten our eyes upon him. We don't know what to do. This vast army is coming among, is coming uh, to take us out, is threatening us. We are no match for them. And that's how life appears to be. It seems like it is no match. It seems like um, you know, we are going to get just uh, topple over. It's, it's too strong. We just don't know what to do. And he came to that place and he says, we do not know what to do. But he says, our eyes are upon you. The scripture talks about, he says, we look to the hills from when it's coming our help, knowing that our help, it comes from God, the creator of the heaven and earth. And he says, but our eyes are fastened toward you. We look to you. And so uh, when he prayed that prayer, this is what God did. God allow uh, those armies to ambush themselves. They fought among themselves. And by the time they, when they fought among themselves, they destroyed each other. And by the time Jehoshaphat and the army went over to look, they saw just dead bodies. And that's how God would fight your battles. And so he says, oh God, will you not judge? He's going to judge. He's going to judge and stand between. And when you go into the courtroom, our God, he's going to judge anyone that fights you for no apparent reason. He says, for we have no power. When you come to that place in your life, and this is where God wants us to come to, to, to say to him, we have no power. This vast army is coming against us. Uh, we don't know what to do. He says, but our eyes are fastened towards him. And I'm telling you, you as a father, you as a mother, if your child says, mom, dad, this is what's going on in school. I don't know what to do. You know what's going to happen, right? You're going to go down to that school and you are going to put things in order. That's what you're going to do. You're going to put things in order and that's you who are natural. And so in your life, God is going to put things in order in your life. Once you fix your concentration upon him, like he says, our eyes are fastened. Our eyes are upon you. And once your eyes are upon God, he's going to move on your behalf. And then the Bible says in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 27, verses 1, and we're speaking about our uh, theme is about the powerlessness, um, the, the, the power of God. It, it's revealed when in our weaknesses. And so today, again, we are talking about saying, don't be a fool. You need God. And Psalms chapter 127, verses 1, 127, verses 1. I like this. It says, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord, he himself, builds the house, persons who, who, who builds it, they are laboring in vain. And so there are a lot of times we lay foundations for our own lives and lay our own path. And if we are doing that in our own self, no guidance, it's like... It, 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 it makes no sense unless the Lord give guidance, unless he gives his peace, unless he gives his blessings and his favor upon what we are doing, we are doing it in vain. And he says, unless the Lord builds the house, it's laborious, labor in vain. And then he says, unless the Lord watches over the city, 
he says, the watchman stands, stands God in vain. It's, 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 it's about him. That's what it is. It's about God. And we have to come to the place in our lives that we need him. Don't be a fool. We need God. We need to depend on him. And that's where our dependence needs to be. And so if, if, if we are building any structure, he is not building it. If we are doing anything and God is not the one watching over it, that's the only way that is going to be preserved. And so we ourselves, if he is, that's what Psalm says, unless the Lord builds the house. It's builders, they labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand God's in vain. That simply means they're watching. But if it isn't God, that simply means even though in their, in their watching, and no matter how alert they would try to be, the enemy would come and take that city because the Lord himself is not watching. But unless he watches over our lives, unless he watches over our lives, we are going to lose many, many battles until he steps in, until he's the one that is watching over the city, until he's the one that is being the builder of our lives. Amen. Praise God. And Jeremiah chapter 10. Love Jeremiah chapter 10. The word is sweet. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 10 verses 23. Jeremiah says, says, for I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. This is what Jeremiah the prophet says. He says, I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. Your life is not your life. I realize that my life is not my life. It's not my own. The Bible said that we've been bought with a price. We've been purchased with the blood of Christ. He has redeemed us, redeemed us, and purchased us with his blood. We are not our own, for we are the body of Christ. So Jeremiah said, I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. Your life is not your own life. He says, it is not for a man to direct his steps. It is not for you to direct your steps. It's not for you, it's for you to pray. And you begin to pray and you get into that posture as you begin to, to, to talk and to communicate with God. The Bible says for a righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. Not a righteous man's steps are ordered by his own works and by his own intelligence. No, a righteous man's steps, they are ordered by the Lord. So Jeremiah says, for I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. My life is not my own. Your life is not your own. And when persons take themselves and say, this is my life, you become a fool. And that's why we say, don't be a fool. But realize that there is a need in your life that we don't just want God we need him don't be a fool he says for I know O Lord that a man's life is not his own it is not for a man to direct his steps and so anything that you're doing when it comes to your steps are uh, being directed and you are not uh, praying and asking the Holy Spirit who is the one that gives guidance and brings everything back to your remembrance if your life is not being guided by him, then you have to be very, very, very careful and make sure that everything that you do, that you are being consulted, uh, that you are consulting God, the ones who, who is omniscient, who knows all things, who is all powerful, who will lead and guide you through the power of the spirit into all truth. That's what he would do. And so he says, it is not for man to direct his steps. So don't, don't be uh, try to be a person that says, you know what, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to direct your, uh, my own way. Your, your life and your makeup as a human being is not designed for you to run your own affairs. If the Lord, <laughs> if he doesn't build the city or he doesn't build the house, okay, the builders, they build in vain. So you don't want to uh, just accomplish things in your own self. It is, it's nothing. It becomes vain. But when we give it to him and he's the one who is the architect of our lives and we allow him to construct it, uh, that's when, again, we talked about the man when trouble comes. Both persons heard, both heard, uh, but one 
one was not just a hearer of the word one was also a doer and the one who was a doer he built his house upon the sand and so upon the rock and so when when adversity came and the wind blew and storms of life came the bible said the one who built his house upon the rock the rock that house stood and the one who heard and didn't act upon it he was the one that built his house upon the sand so when adversity came and when the winds of life and the storms of life came his house got blown away and that's just what it is and so is not god is not god's intent for you to govern your own life it is not his intent and so this is what the prophet says it is not for man to direct his own steps so in wisdom get into the, that that place that secret place begin to pray begin to meditate upon the word of god and you allow god through the power of his spirit to lead and to direct your steps amen and the bible says in the book of uh, john uh, chapter 3 verses 27 it says uh it talks about how one can only uh receive watch this say one can only receive what is given him from heaven one can only receive what is given him from heaven and so you cannot receive or you cannot do anything of yourself unless it comes from heaven and so when man thinks that he is governing his own affairs and he's going about his own life that's not the design and that's not the plan and the purpose that God has for you because only what you receive the thing that you receive it only it would be given from heaven and that's the way it's going to happen we we can only be drawn to or come to Christ to us being drawn by the Holy Spirit and so that's when we talk about we can receive only what is given from us from heaven and then the bible says in the book of john chapter 15 verses john chapter 15 verses 5 john chapter 15 verses 5 says and we hear it a lot but i want to read it in your hearing it says i am the vine jesus saying i am the vine he says you are the branches jesus is the vine we are the branches he says if a man remains in me if he stay united to me and connected to me and i in him it says he will bear much fruit and then he says this if you he says apart from me you cannot do anything apart from me you cannot do anything and so when we speak when he says apart from me that simply means if you are not abiding when you separate yourself from the vine it's like no life the life from from the vine comes to the limbs or comes to uh to the branches and so he's saying apart from me you cannot do anything and so in wisdom and and, and through the wisdom of god remain connected as the branch we are to remain connected to the vine and if we uh, separate ourselves from the vine then there is no life that's going to come to the branch and then we would not be fruitful and so it's like the branch is trying to uh, uh, separate itself from the vine it's like being independent when we become independent from god then we govern our own affairs and our own affairs becomes like nothing it's like when adam and eve when they sin the bible says when they sin what they did they tried to cover it up they tried to cover it up by 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 you know putting leaves around them and that's how they tried to cover it up but that was not the design it's not the purpose the way how god had it to be and so your life can only be fruitful you would only begin to see the manifestation of fruit in your life when we as the branch remain connected to the vine and then he says he says that's when you would bear fruit but other than that he says apart from me you cannot do anything and that's what we have to understand in our own lives that apart from him we are absolutely nothing and this is what the apostle paul talks about in the book of and this will be a last scripture of the apostle paul talks about in the book of uh second corinthians chapter three verses five and he says how uh that all power 
and success, it comes from God. All the power, all of our success, all the things that we accomplish in our lives, we must understand that it comes from God. It comes from him. And so don't be a fool and try to govern your own affairs. Because in governing your own affairs, nothing is going to happen in terms of being fruitful. Your life is not going to be fruitful. And so that's one, it, it takes us back to the scripture when the Bible uh, 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 talks about uh, when we uh, treasures in heaven. So we our treasures in heaven should be where our heart is there our treasures is going to be also too and so our focus should should be again when we speak of treasures uh, being in heaven that simply means that we are walking in the spirit and we are obeying what the word of god says and uh, and through our obedience we are actually our treasure we are showing that hey our treasure is in heaven but when we have the treasures of the things that is in the world, again, the Bible says any man who loved the world, the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. I think we gave you that scripture, uh, uh, gave you that. I think it was on yesterday. And so all power and success. This is what Paul realized that it comes from God. And so in your life, if you are you're doing things of your own, you're governing your own affairs, um, you will not begin to see fruit until we come to the place like Jehoshaphat, until we understand just like Jesus said, we have to abide, until we come to the place like Jeremiah that talks about, listen, it is not for man to govern his own affairs. I know that it's not the way that's that's not the way of God. God have us to design the way that we are fruitful, the way that our lives are beneficial, even to ourselves. The way that happens is when we stay connected to him, to him. And this is what he wants. And so Paul says this. He says, it's not that we are competent in ourselves. Not that we are competent in ourselves, he says, to claim anything of ourselves. But this is what he says. But our competence, it comes from God. Our competence, it comes from God. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Okay? Lean not to thine own understanding he says in all of thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path that's what he says lean not on your own understanding but in all of your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path so paul begin to talk about hey our competence is not that we claim anything of ourselves everything that we have accomplished we realize that it comes from him and this is what the word of God is saying to you today, do not be a fool. You need God in your life. Don't you think that you can live without him and uh, uh, the success that you may come into, that success it becomes vain and becomes nothing because you are trying to accomplish things on your own and your life is designed not for you to do it by yourself. It is a design for your father to watch over you. It is designed for him to build. The Bible says that he hastened his word to perform it in your life. He watches over his word to perform it. So when you say, yeah, I'm governing my own life, then who is watching? He's not watching it. You're watching it. And if you're watching it, then you're watching in vain. And so we are here to encourage you today. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Realize in your life, that you need God. So you may be uh, wealthy. You may be in a place where that you say you don't need God because you have everything that you need. That's not wise because everyone needs God. The breath that I'm breathing right now is his breath. He loaned it to us. And so when he loaned you something, that means everything that we do, my life should is, is living to give God glory. Your life should be existing to give God praise and to give him glory because that's what he has created us to do in the earth and to carry out his own assignments. And so those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. We want you to, to, to realize in your life that you need God. And so we want to say this prayer where you can say this prayer with us, uh, Father, 
in Jesus' name, Lord, I come before you and I come to you as a sinner. Lord, I've been hearing about your return. I've been hearing about the coming of the Messiah. And Lord, when you come, I want to go with you. I want to live with you. And so I ask of you to forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. And I confess that Jesus Christ, that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so, Lord, I come <clears throat> before you. And you said in the word that if I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. You said, I shall be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I accept Jesus Christ today, he, that he is the son of God. He died, was buried and resurrected. And I accept him in my heart today. And I thank you, Lord, for accepting, uh, for allowing me that I can say that I'm a new creature because of what you've done on Calvary Cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. And if you said that, if you said that you are saved, and you can just let us know whenever you watch this uh, this tape or whenever you watch this recording, uh, whatever time it is or whenever you were to see us, you can say, you know what, I, I, did, I, I, I came to that point. I was broken in my life. I accepted Jesus Christ. And now I am a kingdom citizen. If you say that, you can just let us know. Reach out to us. Hey, we are so excited always on behalf of my wife, uh, Janice. We, we, you know, we are blessed that we can be able to speak to you on a daily basis uh, to encourage you, to inspire you, uh, to, uh, to hold on to the things that you believe that God has promised you. And that's what it is so that you would see uh, the manifestation of the things that you are believing God for. And so on behalf of my wife and I, Denzel, uh, my son, Irvin, I would want to thank you for watching uh, what you can do. Like, uh, share, leave a comment, uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, we, we, you know, we want to grow in the things of God and we want as much persons to hear the gospel of the kingdom as possible. And so you can see on the screen, uh, we and carry global.com. We want to give you an opportunity that you can uh, support our ministry. You can go on our page or you can look uh, some of the resources that we have there that is good for young people, good for parents, uh, good for teachers, uh, persons who want to advance themselves and working with young people uh, to be equipped. Uh, we have some resources that will be able to help you. You can support us in our own ministry as we are impacting others. And that's what we want to do. We want to be more of an impact and you can help us to do that by purchasing our materials and so that we would be in a position to help ourselves we love you we bless you and we thank god for you like share and subscribe and so we'll see you tomorrow god bless you we love you